at the third international symposium on the foundations of quantum mechanics held in tokyo 1989 john archibald wheeler presented his revolutionary idea that physical objects may derive their existence from bits of information the heart of his report is the fundamental question why does existence exist the answer to this question wheeler shall explain depends on four key ideas that the universe is not a predetermined machine governed by continuous physical laws that concepts like space and time have no existence at the quantum level that traditional quantum theory is an idealization which hides its true information theoretic origins and that the most fundamental aspect of physics is the elementary quantum phenomenon where information is derived from binary yes or no questions wheeler's paper offers a profound new perspective on the mystery of quantum reality and is of great importance to anyone with an interest in the intersection between physics metaphysics and information theory we now proceed with a simplified abridgment of the text Despite the revolutionary insights of Kepler, Newton, and Einstein in reshaping our understanding of the world, a more profound shift in our perspectives awaits us. The quantum principle, a cornerstone of 20th century physics, and particularly the idea of complementarity emphasized by Niels Bohr, necessitates a radical re-evaluation of our conception of physical reality. Bohr's call transcends Einstein's earlier recognition of the immense importance of the quantum, guiding us toward the ultimate objective, which is to derive the quantum from a comprehensive understanding of existence. How can we make headway toward a goal so great, against difficulties so large? The search for understanding presents us with three questions, four no's, and five clues. The three questions are, how come existence? How come the quantum? And how come one world out of many observers? The four no's are no tower of turtles, no laws, no continuum, and no space or time. And the five clues are the boundary of a boundary is zero, no question, no answer, the super Copernican principle, consciousness, and more is different. Without a guiding idea or hypothesis, we cannot progress in exploring fundamental questions. Like a detective solving a crime, a wrong theory is better than none at all. In this spirit, I, along with others, propose a hypothesis. It from bit. That is, Every element in the physical world, from particles to fields to space-time, derives its existence from answers to binary questions, or bits. It from bit implies that the foundation of the physical world lies in information theory, and that our universe is participatory. Consider the photon, when we ask the yes or no question, did the counter register a click, and answer yes, we attribute it to the photon. However, the photon only exists as a recorded bit of information during that moment. In various field theories, including electrodynamics and geometrodynamics, the phase difference in quantum probability around a circuit serves as a measure of the magnetic field. This reflects the concept of it from bit as the field strength or space-time curvature is revealed through interference pattern shifts, which represent statistical patterns of yes or no registrations. Examining a magnetometer reading of a magnetic field, the concept of bits becomes evident. The magnetometer works by transferring momentum through a wire, and even when dealing with large quantities, it all boils down to these fundamental bits. Thus, information in bits is crucial for understanding physical phenomena. Consider also Jacob Bekenstein's discovery that the surface area of a black hole's horizon measures its entropy, revealing information loss. The Bekenstein number indicates the number of bits needed to detail the black hole's configuration, emphasizing physics as information. 
The presence of the quantum Planck constant, h, in physics equations sheds light on various phenomena, such as viewing the horizon area as lost information, as well as understanding wave frequency and field flux in terms of bit-registered shifts. The small value of h, like the speed of light, is considered a historical artifact, rather than a fundamental constant, pointing toward a future where all of physics can be expressed in the language of information. The question, how come the quantum, is answered by understanding existence as an information-theoretic entity. However, the question remains, whose information creates the world we perceive? Four guiding principles shall help in exploring this. Firstly, there must be no infinite regress. Existence is not a stack of turtles endlessly supporting each other. Instead, there's a loop. Physics leads to observer participancy. Observer participancy leads to information. And information leads back to physics. The second principle is that there are no eternal laws. The laws of physics likely originated at the Big Bang, and the universe's organization may follow the principle that the boundary of a boundary is zero. This approach aligns with self-referential deductive axiomatic systems, emphasizing a foundation-free nature. Contrary to viewing the universe as a predetermined, law-driven machine, the world is self-synthesized. In this way, the bits generated by observer participants constitute the entire space, time, and everything in the universe. The third principle is no continuum. Mathematical logic has shown no evidence supporting the existence of a continuum, challenging beliefs in transcendental mathematical realms. This lesson extends to physics, whereby the conceptual scheme of physical objects is a convenient myth. The fourth principle is no space, no time. Leibniz and Einstein have argued that time and space are not tangible entities, but rather frameworks for understanding. Einstein's space-time, a cornerstone of classical geometrodynamics, faces quantum-induced fluctuations, which raises questions about the very concepts of before and after. We therefore need to translate all of continuum physics into the language of bits for a comprehensive understanding of existence. The first clue is, the boundary of a boundary is zero a fundamental principle in algebraic topology. This is a unifying theme in Maxwell's electrodynamics, Einstein's geometrodynamics, and modern field theories. This simple principle suggests the potential to derive complex physical laws from fundamental principles, offering hope for a comprehensive mathematization of physics. The second clue is no question, no answer, or more precisely, no bit-level question, no bit-level answer. This concept is illustrated by the game of 20 questions, and applies to electrons, fields, and photons. The choice of the question asked, and when it's asked, influences our ability to make assertions about the properties being measured. Examples such as bit registration in electron properties a Horonoff-Bohm determination of field flux magnitude, and black hole bit counts demonstrate that physics is expressed in the language of information. However, seemingly private bit counts, like the distance between atoms in a ruler or the shift of fringes in an experiment, are also influenced by the surrounding environment. The environment significantly influences various physical phenomena, from the motion of particles through cloud chambers to the movement of celestial bodies. This influence is well documented by numerous physicists. While the concept of it from bit holds, though experimental design can minimize the contribution of the surrounding world, it cannot eliminate it, which emphasizes the interconnected nature of the entire system. Contrasting viewpoints emerge when considering the foundation of physics. 
Advocates of continuity build on theories like string theory or Einstein's geometrodynamics, treating quantum theory as a magical processor which transforms various theories into a wave equation. In contrast, the it-from-bit perspective considers bits of information as foundational entities, with continuity being a derived, approximate feature. Probability like space and time, is a human invention, and its definition, whether as frequency or as Bayesian probability, introduces obscurities. The challenge extends to belief-dependent probabilities, and the idea that objective reality is an interpretation agreed upon by large numbers of people. Data interpretation is subjective, and communication is essential to meaning-making. The third clue introduces the super-Copernican principle, which rejects observer-centeredness in the assessment of existence. An observer-participant is defined as one who operates an observing device and contributes to meaning-making. The notion that measurements and observations are not fundamental in discussing the early universe is challenged by the idea of it from bit, which asserts that reality is theory, and the past has no evidence except as recorded in the present. A photon from a distant quasar is considered to have had no existence until registered today. Every delayed choice experiment reinforces that elementary quantum phenomena become phenomena through irreversible acts of amplification, shaping what we call the past with bits. While the count of bits required to structure the universe is immense, it is not infinite. Using familiar reasoning, and translating the entropy of the primordial cosmic fireball, we estimate the number of bits to be 8 times 10 to the power 88. This overwhelming number, as per the super-Copernican principle, cautions against its comparison to the bits of information generated by current observer participants. The future, with billions of years, and countless sites of observer participancy yet to come, will play an equally significant role in generating the reality of today and beyond, extending the scope of interstellar communication far into the future. The fourth clue introduces consciousness and its role in interpreting existence. It questions whether the it-from-bit view seeks to explain the physical world in terms of consciousness. While consciousness remains a complex and evolving concept, the focus shifts to the broader idea of communication and its role in establishing meaning. The work of Dagfin Follersdahl emphasises that meaning is the joint product of evidence available to those who communicate this prompts questions about communication with other species, the distinction between closed and open communication networks, and the challenge of defining reality in a world of intense communication. The fifth and final clue, More is Different, illustrates that large numbers can generate new features. It suggests that the evolution from small to large, evident in systems like computers and telecommunications, might explain the self-generated organs of a self-synthesized information system shaping physics and existence. The space-time continuum cannot claim primordial status in describing nature. It is an idealization. No physical quantity exists with a fixed value without the context of questions and observations. Physics emerges from information, solicited through observing devices, manifested in bits. Over billions of years, countless elementary acts of observer participancy contribute to reality, and this is the foundation of the it-from-bit concept. The challenge of understanding existence invites several avenues of exploration. We should seek to understand whether quantum theory requires additional elements, translate quantum theories into a language based on bits, refine our understanding of bits, adapt mathematical tools to better deal with bits, draw parallels from the evolution of computer programming to understand the structure of physics, 
and finally, use information theory to establish connections with quantum phenomena. We should celebrate the lack of a precise definition for bit in the establishment of meaning, understanding that true progress involves the interconnected birth of theory, concept, law, and method of measurement. The ultimate question driving this exploration is whether we can ever comprehend existence, and we are guided by the hope that a simple, beautiful, and compelling central idea will eventually illuminate our understanding. And that brings us to the end of Information Physics Quantum, The Search for Links. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel for many more abridgments of scientific, philosophical, and spiritual texts. If you'd like to support the survival of this channel, please refer to the video description for information on how to do so. Any and all help is incredibly valuable. Thank you, as always, for listening, 